China's youth is giving up. They've quit their jobs, they've abandoned their families, and they have stopped trying in pretty much every aspect of life. What started out as a gimmicky online fad, Bailan, or Let It Rot, has gained more and more traction with the country's youth and become sort of a peaceful but effective rebellion against the CCP's governance. It has spread so much that it's actually affecting the nation's economy and its future. The CCP is so worried about this that Xi Jinping himself had to come out and call for the help of the country's youth to go back to work. So in this video, we'll cover how China got here, how did things get so bad that the youth have completely given up on life, and how is this affecting the economy and Xi Jinping's rule. I'm basically say no to the system. Uh, I will not cooperate. Then I have my own anti-social behavior. By Lang is even worse than uh, Tamping. So that's the reason why Chinese leadership really worry about uh, this trend. The phrase is really commonly used by, by me, by my friends, by the younger people in China. As we understand it, it's pretty disastrous in the long term, structurally, right? Particularly as China's facing the same kind of demographic challenges. Unemployment in cities rose to almost 20% in July 2022, the highest since the Chinese government started publishing the figures in 2018. As a result, the country's economy has slowed down and is struggling to boost growth. OK, before getting into why Xi Jinping is so worried about this let it rot movement, let's start from the beginning. How did we get here and why are the Chinese youth seemingly giving up on life? I feel like I've shown this chart hundreds of times in my past videos, but here's China's GDP over the last few decades. They've experienced an explosive growth in their economy as China opened up to the world and became the global manufacturing hub. This led to noticeable improvements in people's lives. We can see that if we just look at GDP per capita. Millions of people who were born in underdeveloped villages in rural China were pulled out of poverty and are now living pretty respectable middle-class lives. That's a huge advancement in the span of a few decades. If we look at China's income graph, we can see that in 1990, the average Chinese citizen was making $330 annually. And by 2019, that figure is closer to $10,000. That kind of increase in a nation of a billion plus people? Well, that's no small feat. The government did have to do a lot of forceful and uh, questionable stuff to achieve this, but I mean, it's still impressive. The main issue here is that there were a lot of questionable policies along the way that the government implemented that are coming back to haunt them now. One of these policies was the one-child policy. One child policy it was basically exactly what it sounded like, limiting how many children families could have. In 1979, when it was introduced, China was a poor country facing an exploding population. 400 million births haven't happened because of this policy. It faced massive famine and housing shortages. Its economy needed time to develop, and the world deeply feared overpopulation. China's response was the famous one-child policy. Fearing overpopulation, the CCP forced families to have only one kid. Most of us could have guessed, but this led to many problems that we're going to need a whole separate video to cover. But here's a quick summary of what's important for this topic. Because of the CCP's one-child policy, it's expected that soon the country will have more older people than younger workers. Here's China's demographic pyramid in 1980, around the time when the one-child policy went into effect. This is great for any nation a lot of working adults and kids. Adults are productive members of the economy right now, and kids will be productive members of the society in the coming future. The older population? Well, they already put in their hard work. So now they get to live off the work of the economically productive members of the society. That's why any growing economy usually has a lot of productive members and a smaller number of non-productive members. But due to the one-child policy, China's population wasn't able to replace itself. I mean, think about it. 
If you need two kids just to replace the parents in the future, and maybe a little bit more to make up for any unexpected deaths, that's why the replacement birth rate is around 2.1 kids per family. Coming back to our topic about China's youth, there's a lot of cultural pressure on them as well. Older generations who worked hard and witnessed China's exponential growth now have their expectations set pretty high. They expect their kids to continue the same progress for the family and the country. They expect the current generation of workers to get a higher education, get a high paying job, and continue building towards a better and better life for their family. And this is not to say that other cultures don't have the same expectations for their kids, but in China, this expectation is a bit unrealistic with the way the CCP is managing the economy. And because of Chinese culture, a lot of adults are expected to take care of their parents, and sometimes even their grandparents too. On top of that, they're expected to constantly succeed in their work life, save up for a house, get married, and keep progressing. This is already too much pressure on a working population that is shrinking in China. But the problems don't stop there. This video is sponsored by me. We had a real sponsor, but they backed out because they didn't like the topic of the video. So I'm sponsoring my own video. More details later in the video. For now, please hit that like button. As youth unemployment stands at 18.4%, Chinese authorities launched a sweeping crackdown on private and online tuition, which wiped out an estimated 3 million jobs. Around 9 million Chinese students are graduating each year. Those graduating today find themselves going into a tough labor market that doesn't match expectations. Simultaneous slump since May 2020, China's exports and imports, they have unexpectedly contracted. Economists estimated that China was losing $45 billion in GDP per month. Currently, China's youth unemployment rate sits at a jaw-dropping 20%. Nearly one in five young workers don't have a job. This is in part due to the Bailan movement, but also in part due to there not being enough jobs. In the early 2010s, the CCP made a heavy push to get China's students to pursue higher education, which, you know, sounds like a great thing, and it usually is. The more educated a population becomes, the better it is for the economy. But in China's case, everything didn't really go according to plan. The CCP expected China to be a more mature economy by now. But China's economy is still driven mainly by low-income manufacturing jobs. So when the government pushes students towards higher education, these students expect high-income, high-skilled jobs when they graduate. And now the CCP is realizing that there just aren't enough jobs for all these highly educated graduates. This is creating intense competition between graduates to land what little jobs China's economy does have to offer. In this situation, any competent government would tailor policies to attract foreign companies that need this labor, and promote more business activity locally so that graduates can find jobs. So what did the CCP do? Why, the exact opposite, of course. Baba's founder Jack Ma has made a powerful enemy, the Chinese President Xi Jinping. On the same day, shares plunged almost 10%. Xi Jinping is the supreme leader, and Alibaba's Jack Ma learned this the hard way. A $37 billion IPO was cancelled at the 11th hour. Reports say the order came right from the top. Alibaba was fined a record $2.8 billion for monopolistic conduct. China has issued regulations for off-campus tutoring services banning private firms from offering after-school training in core school subjects. Well, the move has raised concerns among both parents and private education institutions. The sudden policy change has led to a tutoring black market, which could benefit wealthy families and price out poorer families. In an attempt to reel in China's billionaires and send a message to all Chinese elites, Xi Jinping set out to destroy Jack Ma, and the majority of the tech sector, really. With trumped-up regulations and fines, the CCP destroyed hundreds of billions of dollars in value for China's tech companies. And with these companies getting battered from all sides, the job prospects for many graduates disappeared overnight. On top of this, the CCP also banned the whole tutoring industry with a snap of a finger which was worth close to $100 billion at the time. Tutoring was a common job option for many highly educated graduates that, well, disappeared in an instant because of the CCP's actions. 
So when you factor all this in, you can see why finding a job is getting harder and harder for China's youth. And the CCP had been of no help. Uh, and then COVID hit. This from Chinese state media arrive in Wuhan to cover a story about a mysterious new virus. The few confirmed cases of the disease are at a seafood market. Wuhan in China now on lockdown as the country struggles with fear of a pandemic. Desperate measures to try and contain the deadly coronavirus. That deadly coronavirus outbreak has authorities taking new, unprecedented, drastic action today as they try to keep a lid on it. 13 cities with a combined population equaling Canada's nearly in lockdown this morning. They're racing to build a new 1,000 bed hospital to treat patients. Even though the CCP did a good job containing the spread during the early days of COVID, you really can't say the same for 2022. When COVID cases spiked again in Chinese cities in 2022, the CCP went on an all-out war to achieve its utopian-like goal of zero COVID. Brutal lockdowns killed countless businesses and stifled any economic bounce back that China's businesses had been working towards. The global economy was also slowing down, which heavily impacted China and its local job market. As you can see, the job market is shrinking more and more, and cultural pressure to be successful is piling up on China's youth as they get older. As I've discussed in my previous videos, much like the American dream, the Chinese dream is to get a job and then buy real estate. Real estate holds a very important significance in Chinese culture. Men with real estate are considered high status and more suitable for marriage. Going back to the CCP's one-child policy, since families were only allowed one child, a lot of them favored having a boy over a girl. This has led to a drastic mismatch in the male-to-female ratio in China. There are around 70 million more men than women in China. This makes the competition for marriage even more intense much like the job market competition. This is part of the reason why real estate prices have been skyrocketing in China over the past few decades. And before someone comments, let me clarify, I'm not saying this is the only reason behind the real estate bubble. There are many other factors that play a bigger role, but marriage desirability is at least a small part of the reason behind the price rises in China. Even though the real estate bubble seems to be popping in China, buying an apartment is still very much out of reach for many households. In fact, if we look at this chart from 2016, we can see that many Chinese cities rank in the top 10 worst cities in terms of home prices versus average income of residents. Things haven't improved much in six years either. I can't find a chart, but here's a table with the same data. You can see there are still many Chinese cities in the top 10. So, Real estate ownership is important in China if you want to progress in life, but it's nearly impossible to buy based on average Chinese salaries. Jobs are getting incredibly hard to get because of intense competition for the small number of jobs that are available when compared to, well, a large pool of prospects. And if you are lucky enough to get a job, working in Chinese culture is pretty intense, especially when compared to the salaries being paid. It's common to see the 996 work schedule in China meaning you work from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week, all while making very little money. And if you dare complain about anything, well, employers have all the leverage, since they can replace you in a heartbeat due to the high demand for your job. So as the situation kept getting worse and worse, and the CCP was doing very little to improve the economy, a movement started brewing in China. Yeah has been awash with the phrase buy land, which means let it rot. This has coincided with many young people in China becoming increasingly frustrated with both their personal and professional lives. The phrase is really commonly used by, by me, by my friends, by the younger people in China. You know, naturally people are going to rebel against something that really undermines their physical, moral and spiritual well-being. The jobs are scarce. You know, the competition is keen. So that is why I'm saying that I, I don't want to engage in this kind of competition. They just can't see any hope in doing so. Chinese youth have started giving up on trying in an attempt to force the government to improve their situation. So far on Weibo, the related hashtag has accumulated over 93.2 million views. 
And searching the phrase on Xiaohongshu results in over 2.6 million user-generated content UGC, instances. It's spreading so quickly that the CCP has actually started censoring the keywords online. Talking about censorship, some of the videos I'm making on this channel are sometimes considered too controversial for YouTube and their almighty algorithm may not recommend them to you. So, if you guys can just take a quick second to hit that subscribe button, it would help me out a lot. Appreciate it. Young people have burned out trying so hard for so long to no avail. This is how they make sense of it in their mind. Someone has to be a loser because of the way the economy is set up. Too many people and not enough jobs. Real estate prices are too high and salaries, well, aren't. So why try so hard if you know you're just gonna fail? If you don't try at all, then at least you're not disappointed when you inevitably lose, right? So that's basically the thinking behind the whole let it rot movement. I know it sounds crazy to some older folks, but that's how it's being looked at right now in China. Have you guys ever, you ever been playing a game where you're losing so badly that you just, you stop trying? There's no chance you're going to make a comeback, so why not at least, you know, just save the energy? Well, that's pretty similar to how Chinese youth are feeling towards life right now. Even though it may sound silly to some, this is turning into a serious problem for the future of China's economy and the communist government. CCP officials have publicly come out and said that this attitude will slow China's growth and will result in generations of slackers. State media has already started publishing articles about why the youth should avoid Bailan and refuse that mindset. But so far, the movement doesn't look like it's slowing down. Only the future will tell us how much this affects the already slowing Chinese economy. So, since I couldn't get a sponsor, I decided to sponsor it myself and tell you guys about problems with our Facebook page. Facebook has been restricting our videos because it considers the topics too sensitive. Apparently, videos talking about China's economic crisis are too sensitive for Facebook. This makes it hard to grow as a new page, so if you guys use Facebook, it would mean the world to me if you followed my page on Facebook. Our next video about why China has so many enemies will be released on Facebook a full 24 hours before YouTube. So please, follow the page. It's the first link in the description.